which involves a little bit of math here. I don't think I've done this math, so I'm going to have to figure it out. Also, let's see what the numbers are first. Maybe you've done it for me. Uh, it's hard to tell. If it were, if it were, this is pretty dominant answer. So I, you've probably done the math for me good enough. Um, how many bonds here compared to the number of bonds there? Well, here the atoms have something like four bonds around each one. And here the atoms have something like six. Now there's edge effects that you might worry about. I'm not going to worry about those right now. I'm just going to say this one has something like four bonds per atom and this one has something like six. It's actually a number, it'll, if, you be, if you count it carefully, it'll, this will be a number sm a little smaller than six and this will be a number a little smaller than four. But if we take four here and multiply by what, negative 3.5, then you get negative, I don't know, 13 or 14. And this one is 6 times whatever this number is, negative 1.8. So 6 times negative 2 would be negative 12. So already it's not low enough. It's not going to be as, this is going to be a higher bond energy than this one. This one's going to be more strongly bound. Now, I, I, if I'm going to be really careful, I'm going to have to worry about edge effects. Like this one only has three at the edge, only has three bonds. This one only has two. This one right here only has three. This one right here has uh, five around it instead of six. So I, I can count those up carefully. Uh, I, I don't think that the, the difference between uh, whatever this one is probably uh, negative I don't know, 10 or something, and this one's like negative 14. I don't think that's going to have a big effect, not a big enough effect. And, and also there's, there's next nearest neighbors that you might have to worry about, although I'm not going to ask you things like that on a quiz. But, but this one right here is not too far away from that one or this one or that one or this one. And this one right here is not too far away from those. The second nearest neighbors are you can check this. The second nearest neighbors are closer in this one than in that one. So the second nearest neighbors will have a, a bigger effect lowering the energy here. I, I tried to make it different enough that, that this one was going to win no matter what. Yeah. Um, the, I mean that one was going to be the lowest. Yeah. Um, is B impossible <coughs> in the sense that there's no reason that that um, mass would like tessellate itself because then they would have six and it would be lower in energy that way? Like is where it ever stays stacked like that. You mean two-dimensional? I mean, oh, you mean I, I, I left it as a two So this is a fake okay. solid. I mean, there, there isn't anything that would be two-dimensional that way that I know about. I don't think there's any... There's... There, there's no atom that has uh, bonds available in four directions and not in the other two. And even if it did, it could uh, rotate, it could, you know, make bonds in, in slightly different ways. So, so this is a, uh, these, this one is a fake and, and that one's nearly a fake because they're two-dimensional and what they would really do is, is collapse into a three-dimensional object and form a lot more bonds is what they would all do. So I, I meant this to be a, a bond counting exercise rather than an exercise in reality. Uh, reality is a lot more complicated and I just wanted you to think about counting up bonds. Any other questions on this other than reality? Um, yeah. In, in BL we would divide the nearest neighbors by two to count for like double counting. You, you certainly would if you wanted a real number, but if I divided this, the top one by two and the bottom one by two, I would st the, the, which one was bigger would still be the same. Um, dividing by two is, is, is avoiding double counting because every bond, remember when we, draw, when we say interaction potential energy, we're talking about two atoms. Every bond is a bond between this atom and this atom. It's a bond between two. And if you want to divide up the energy, 
The best way to keep track of it is to take only half of that bond energy and give it to this one and the other half and give it to this one. So any one bond, the energy of that bond gets divided into the two pieces. So, th so that you don't double count. You can think about how that would end up double counting. And in fact, this is a really good one to do it with or that because there's a finite number of bonds. You can just stand there and draw all the things and count them and, and figure out what, uh, you know, how wrong you would be if you counted uh, six atoms per bond and then multiplied by six without dividing by two. And you can figure it out really easily how, wrong, how, how that double counts. Any other So, you know that, you will practice with this a little more, but really what I want to get you thinking about now is a microscopic picture of thermal energy. And we've talked about this a little bit. Thermal energy is made up of kinetic energy terms. And if there are bonds, it's made up of potential energy terms too. Because if there's a bond and you increase the average kinetic energy, then you increase the average potential energy. So if you're adding thermal energy, some of it will be kinetic energy and some of it will be potential energy. And so my question for you is going to be about uh, different kinds of energies. So I just wanted to run this thing so you could see. This is, this is my, my attempt to uh, put together, these are supposed to be helium atoms, kind of jump running around. So it's a monatomic gas. And this was supposed to be a, an O2, but it could be N2. Doesn't really matter. Some sort of a diatomic molecule. They're clearly stuck together. And you can see the motion of these things. The, the monatomic gas just moves around through space. The diatomic gas also moves around through space. Here it is, it was over here, so it went over here, bounced against the wall. The diatomic molecules also move through space. But they're doing other things also. You can see that this diatomic molecule is kind of slowly moving like that and then it'll hit something and then it comes back again and it's clearly doing something other than just moving through space. In fact, you can also see that because there's a bond, it can oscillate back and forth. So there are different kinds of motion for that diatomic gas than just, it's a lot more complicated kind of motion. You've got to describe not only where it is in space, but its orientation and how far apart the atoms are, because they can be far apart or closer together and they can, and they can oscillate. Why is orientation So, have I added something? Can I, if I change the orientation, if something is changing its orientation, Let's say I interact with this tennis ball and I, and I do something so it doesn't, I mean I can make it fly up in the air and I can make it go down to the ground. Can I do something that doesn't change its location but does add energy to it that's not heat? And the answer is yeah, I can. Okay, it's changing its location a little because I really can't do that. Uh, I'm not good enough to just spin it without changing its location. But I interacted with it and now it has more energy than it did. And same thing here. This thing changing its orientation has, uh, it doesn't, it hardly looks like it because it's hardly spinning at all. And by the time it spins halfway around, something hits it and starts spinning in a different direction. So, so but it's, it has uh, uh, energy of, of rotation. Do the helium atoms have energy of rotation? Maybe I should put it this way. Could I tell 
Is it possible to, I mean, I can, I can write pen on this, and so I can see if it's rotating, because a pen comes around every once in a while. Can you tell if a helium atom is rotating? Is it some way to, to put a dot on that electron cloud so you can tell if it's rotating around? No, in fact, a lot of atoms have electrons that are, in fact, in some sense, rotating. But, but they don't change their rotation very uh, at, at the low energies that, that we live at. So atoms, although they might in some sense be rotating, uh, don't change their rotation and so we are going to ignore all kinds of uh, rotation of atoms because it's not important, the, those issues. Uh, it feels like if you know where it is, you know how fast it's going so you can never calculate rotational energy. Well, uh, uh, the the angular. What's the angular momentum of a of a in an S shell? Okay, zero. It's zero. In other words, the ad, the ad, the um, angular momentum is the thing that tells you about rotation. It turns out that's the word you would use to talk about rotations. If it's zero, the thing isn't rotating. If it's one, it is rotating. But unless it's going to change from 1 to 2, it's not going to change its rotation. So we don't see changes of rotation in the, the, the temperatures we live at, so of rotation of atoms. So none of our atoms, our single atoms, are going to be rotating. But two atoms stuck together, absolutely they can rotate. The nuclei can move around each other, and you can definitely see that. So, my question for you. Suppose we have one O2 molecule and Avogadro's number of helium atoms in a container at a high temperature. What types of energy can the O2 molecule have? So that's the question. What types of energy can the O2 molecule have in this gas? 